Did Hi, you Pam. watch it? Did you watch the game? Just tell me, did you watch the game? How are you? Should I spray the mic? Did the last person have a disease? Um, my mouth. No, yeah. but the guy you're talking to now does. <laughs> um, yeah, just don't use my that mouth mic. keeps touching the. <laughs> oh no! Are you a jar? Now, what did the no, mic smell? Or it's or... fine. Yes, it smelled like spit and feet. Though. Oh yeah, no! That's what Where we were you? <laughs> that's what do you spray, Pam? <laughs> it was like lavender eo. It's um. What a it's smart thing to do. Right? So it smells better. Yeah. Do you it ever doesn't do that? smell like somebody's <laughs> mouth or ass. My, my mic, I, I only use my own mic thing. It's because it's, it's disgusting yeah, to talk on mics. Gonna, it stinks. Because sometimes your mouth touches it. Right. Have you done that before when you're doing like another radio station and like you lean in to do something or something and all of a sudden your lips make contact and you're like, oh. Dude, you try not to do no. it on a microphone in, in a comedy club. Right. Oh, yeah, in a comedy club. So you see all oh. like the little like bits of food Terrible. and stuff. Uh, it's Terrible. The microphones are gross. Like, guys who travel with their own mics, I get. Yeah. Yes. You should do that. You should start doing it though, like a pop star, like a like a diamond encrusted, like pink microphone. Like everybody knows Jim's here. Yeah, they should. They see that magical mic up there. That's like my thing. <laughs> yeah. Pink. pink is good for him. It is right. It I is. would like that. Yeah, can I master enough to pull it off? Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are you, Pam? It's very good to see you. I'm really good. Thank you. I can't believe it's been a year since yeah. I sat in this room. This is crazy. It's close to it. Yeah. Oh no, we were doing test shows last summer. Yeah, it was August. That's yeah. right. It, yeah. it has been a year. So you've been going to like you were at the Emmys with Louis. Yep. Are you guys getting married? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're ne we're never gonna get married. Again. No. Are you happy to not be married? You guys are both like divorced, so you, you like have freedom and you're happy. I, I've, I pinching myself. I'm so happy in my life right now. Put put way. My kids are all okay. They're all older. You know, my two youngest are in high school. The baby's in high school now. Right. Remember wow. her? Jesus. She wasn't even two when we did Lucky Louie. Wow. Um, and it's it's unbelievable. Like, I, you know, I have five jobs, you know, and to, to look at my life, like the past decade to now, I can't even uh, believe it. I right. can't. I can't. I mean, it's hard work. It's hard work. But I've it's good, though. Really it's hard. nice to worry. It sucks not doing anything. I, I couldn't do it. Have I, you seen Mike Haggerty? I haven't. Like the guy we were talking about before. Right, right. Lucky, I, I really, I haven't seen him or I haven't seen uh, the woman who played Kim. I don't remember her name. So, Kim Hawthorne. Oh, that, oh, right, right, right. I haven't Kim, seen her. I played Kim. You mean Jerry Miner's wife. Jerry Miner's wife, yeah. Yeah, Kim Hawthorne, Laura Keitlinger. Oh, her real name was Kim, so I remembered her real name. That's right. Okay. That's right. So when, you have, like, when you're at this place where you <laughs> love your life and you've worked hard, 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 and now it's finally like, yes, I love my life right now. Do you... Toy, toy, toy. Right. Is you, are you are you constantly oh. afraid of it? Like, listen, what sure. do I do to when I was this? shooting this season, which was a forty day shoot, ten episodes, all on location, cross boarded, two countries, two crews. I was keeping my head low. I was like, okay, I'm short timing. Like, I'm something's good. You know what I mean? Life is like that. You right. know, it's like you know when things are bad, you expect things to explode because it's you're going down this right. bad hole and then when things are good you're like you know when's the shoe gonna drop or yeah. something like that so you can't think that way you just need to make the most of the time that you're living in and just kind of be in the moment and enjoy yeah. like this is great right now yeah and you have to keep the momentum going because you know my dad always said irons in the fire what did your dad do fire. i know he was in hollywood he he was a writer and producer and so he would just constantly have, like, this is what the walls of his office would look like. They were peppered with, like, post-it notes and, like, ideas and brain bits, he would call them. So it's like, so now I have two seasons of my show under my belt. The second season just started airing. But I'm thinking about other things because I have the ability to make work for myself and other people now. I don't want to lose this opportunity. I right, was able to do yeah. my show because I had this window of opportunity and it was getting smaller and smaller and right. I jumped through at probably the only moment I could have done it. See, what I like to do is let a window of opportunity completely shut and then get <laughs> cemented over and then my yeah. manager goes, Jim, 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 they're fans, they're fans. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> is that that was of, awful. Is, is, is that a lot of pressure for you now? Like, especially now that like, like it worked, you realize that the window of opportunity thing is a real thing. So now it's like you have to be constantly aware 
of where these windows of opportunities are so you don't miss them? Like, is that something that you're like, ah? Well, it's just like, you know, I would imagine people who have their own office, you know, one day when I, you know, when I was younger. And now, you know, I have an office. And so I can generate material right. and things like that and it's like it just feels good to be a boss you know what i mean yes. and to not have to just sit there and go well i gotta wait for pilot season maybe i'll get an episode of jake and the fat man Ugh. or maybe even a two episode arc or something you know yeah. is that still on i don't know <laughs> but it's, it's a great reference i haven't heard it you probably wouldn't be able to do that show today if i have to change it something else be body shaming yeah you know, yeah, Jake and the beautiful man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's beautiful yeah, too. Jake and the BBW. This is so cool to see your names on here, and it's all like a new thing. I love it. That's true, yeah. but, they, but it's only on screens where they can immediately put the next show up. There's nothing oh, permanent. Yeah, yeah they, they, no, they, these things are plastic. It's on plastic, they are. so they we can still right bring off. the plastic things home <laughs> if we right. want them. But they did too. They were like, "Oh, this is going to be great," because it used to be. They would make walls, and your names would be printed on the walls. And then they go, and you'd be like, "This is great, right, forever. It's permanent." And then they go, "Oh, we got something even better. We're gonna get screens in here and put your names on the screens." And you're like, "Yeah, it's digital." And then you're like, "Wait a minute, you could just—it's like a parking space, right? You just Be change it, exactly. Yeah, you just <laughs> remove the sign." How did I never know? Because I've known you for so long. Maybe I knew this and forgot. Two projects you were in that I didn't realize. I—I uh, I didn't realize you were in a little darlings. The film with uh, Armand Asante, right? I wasn't in the movie. I did the pilot of the movie. I was the Christy McNichol part. Wow. What do you mean the pilot of the movie? We did a pilot of Little Darlings, and I was, um, oh, there was uh, Ferris, and what was what was my name? I was, the, I was the Christy McNichol character, but it never got picked up. Yeah. Oh, there was a pilot after the movie? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It we shot it on the Laverne and Shirley stage. Oh, did you get to meet them? It, I didn't, but I, I mean, I met Penny Marshall years later, like doing a voiceover thing with her, but um, Gary Marshall came over when we were on the set, we were having a food fight and he said, this is a great place. Take care of it. Have fun kids. <laughs> and they didn't pick us up. Oh, okay. So that's, uh, and also I didn't realize you were, had a 12 episode uh, thing in the facts of life. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that either. I did, who did you play? I played Kelly Afanato. I robbed Edna's edibles. Uh, I held up Mrs. Garrett. Oh, that's great. Whoa. I dropped a jar of pickles, and uh, they caught me red-handed. Yeah. So how did so they get like 12 episodes out of that? Well, they, they hired me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Seems like you cleared that up in one very if special If you want to know, here's the, here's the real story. <laughs> they hired me to be a new kid they wanted me to be like the the tomboy like joe they like, wanted me to be joe like nancy like, mckeon <laughs> originally it was going to be like joe's cousin and so then um they hired me to do uh for for one season and basically i was told that she did not want this new character or her people or joe? something yeah Oh. That so then basically I was told they went to the network with a red pen every week and so basically instead of being this like uh, you know homeless kid or whatever um, they turned me into a rich kid liar. Okay, <laughs> but you still so, got on the show. Yes, I was very. Uh, I it was like my dream come true, and then like my hopes were dashed. I only ended up doing um, seven out of like. 22 episodes. Well, how so are they? Oh, sorry. How well, are they to you? Would they treat you well or no? Um, you know, uh, Kim Fields was uh, uh, amazing. She was very sweet. And um, Mindy Cohn, um, still friends with her. Oh, you like her? She was nice. Yeah. How was Lisa Welcher? Uh, she was a fan of reading Christian fiction. Really? <laughs> was she really? <laughs> yeah. She, I don't know. Oh, I, my God. Hey, is that your copy of Christ Scores a Touchdown? <laughs> oh, boo. So, <laughs> when you're, when you're, yuck. I don't think she was into my thing. <laughs> Christ oh. Scores a Touchdown. <laughs> this is my first tell all. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> do you? <laughs> well, I don't know what Christian fiction is. No, Christ scores a touchdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jesus plays yeah. football. <laughs> Next season, Jesus is going to play baseball. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, look at three bottle. Yes, Margaret, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. My God. <laughs> do you? Uh, do you know that Joe doesn't want you on the show? Like when you get there, do you find that out later? I I I got wind of it. 
it was kind of a bummer. Was but, she not nice to you? Um, but, you know, she she was she was nice. She was cordial. Cordial, but didn't you could want tell. me there. Yeah. Wow, and it's funny you're much bigger than she is now. Like it's, it's it's odd how those things happen. Like you're on top of the world, and then you don't treat somebody well, or you work against somebody, and it's like, and now look at how things are different. Yeah, I've never actually told the real story. So I feel <laughs> yeah, that this is all about your entire... Repercussions are your, coming my way. Your entire career has been a revenge plot against Joe from the Fast yeah. Life. This is what I it's guess. all for. Yeah. That's all I would talk about. You're much nicer than me. I'm very vindictive. <laughs> as soon as I won that Emmy in 2002 and I'd be like, where are you now, shithead? And I would have walked off... <laughs> did, I, did I win an Emmy in 2002? You do. Wow. Uh, well, you did. You won for... Uh, hold on a second. The King it was of the a, Hill. King of yeah. the Hill voiceover, yeah. yeah. You could do it in the Bobby Hill voice. Oh, that's Fuck right. Because you, Joe. <laughs> I was pregnant with um, my youngest at, at that point. She was born in 2003. Did you go up and accept, or do they not I always? Did. Oh, wow. I did. That was at the Schmemmies, you know, yeah. what we call the Schmemmies, the What's... Creative Arts Awards. So they mm. hold those the week before the Emmys. It's still amazing. Um, it was incredible. What, what it was is it's a juried award. So um, a jury of my peers uh, voted to give me the Emmy. So I was told beforehand. Oh, you were. And which I I still couldn't believe it when they told me. And I was I was very pregnant when I went to the Emmys. And the story about that is I went with my mom and Stephen Root and his wife, um, who played Bill on King of the Hill. And so we were on the red carpet. And the woman who made my outfit, I was super pregnant. And the only accessory I wore was my giant tits. <laughs> and I was on the red carpet. And I said, oh, I gave my camera to Stephen Root. And I said, take a picture of me for Rachel, who had made the outfit for me. And he was taking a picture of me. And somebody said, can you move along? Paula Abdul is coming. And I was like, fuck her. I want an Emmy. I'm not moving along. <laughs> But it was um, it was it was an amazing experience to be able to uh, to get honored in that way. Yeah, it is. It's got to feel good. People say oh, it doesn't matter, but it's still nice to it win something. Definitely matters. Is that show coming? Are they are they talking about reviving that show? I have no. I, I mean, you know what I mean. It's like they ask you questions like that at the yeah. TCAs, and I think that probably Mike and Greg were in a conversation, but I I have no. I have not a clue. I don't know. You would do it though. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Oh, you would do You would go back to doing it. Of course. Of I, course. Voiceover stuff is hard to get. I, I get auditions for it sometimes, but I don't. Do you know? Do you do any fun voices? Yeah. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tastes like popcorn. Yeah. No, it, it, they're difficult to do because you don't know what can, they're looking for. Yeah. yeah. But you should, you should do something animated with I, your voice. Yeah. I, well, I do a podcast that people are now animating and uh, people are actually enjoying that this version of the animation. But uh, I, I, uh, I, I had this one I forgot to do yesterday for DreamWorks. You forgot to do I an do it at home for... in my closet, which, you know, how comfortable <laughs> yes. I am in there. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> your, that's your home. But no, it's, it's very soundproof. It's really good. I thought it was under the porch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Start, start under yeah. the porch. Yeah, it morphs yeah. into the old. Yeah. <laughs> it goes right into the closet. Nice. I have a nice built-in. <laughs> yeah. Nice walk-in closet. But it's good for voiceover auditions. Purple velvet. You yeah, forgot yeah. to do it? I did, yeah. But I just I get them all the time. They email them to oh, you and you do it to your iPhone. Excuse do you have me. a voiceover agent? I do, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, <clears throat> well good luck. Apparently, I'm, you know, she's certainly not eating well. She's not eating well if she's relying on my fucking checks. Hopefully, she has other clients. Hopefully, her, she doesn't have all her hopes on me. Yeah. So far, no dice. Hey, how about Grease 2? My first movie. Your and, first movie? Yeah, my first movie. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe that I was playing Lorna Luft's little sister because she was Judy Garland's da daughter and freaked me out. Oh. I had the best time. Wait, she's Liza's sister? She is. Well, her father was Sid Luft, and Liza's father was Vicente. Vicente Minelli. Oh, okay. But yeah, my first movie, I loved it. It was amazing. I was like 14 years old and everybody else was like 40. <laughs> like, it was so you're the kid on the set. Yeah. It was um, it was fun. I saw that Michelle Pfeiffer was at the Emmys the other night and I never yeah. got to say hi to her and she was my buddy when we shot She's that. Got Have you seen her since then? Um, I saw her a few years after, but it's been... Years and 25 years. years since you've talked to her. There's a Michelle yeah, oh, Pfeiffer yeah. renaissance happening. 
Is she's there? in that movie Mother. She's in the uh, Bernie Madoff HBO movie. She was like, the best. That. Yeah, she's doing a bunch of stuff. Her dancing in Scarface should have won her an Oscar. That was you the best. So? Yeah, that little, that little I whole know. Whole <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> she was so good in Too that. Too good. I don't fuck the help, Tony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> really good film. Um, so you audition for this. You get this, uh, your first film. Do, is there like a lull after that, or do you go right into something else? Um, after Grease 2, yeah. I did the Little Darlings pilot. Oh. <laughs> was that the first thing you did that didn't get picked up? Like, like that was your first, like, reality check? Like, wow, you could shoot something and have yeah. it not? Yeah, it was. It was, um, yeah, that's when. But Grease 2, the auditioning for Grease 2, I sang You Can't Get a Man With a Gun was my audition song. And Look At Me, I'm Sandra D. Oh. And then, or Sandra D, however you say it. Sandra. And then, um, the... Uh, the last audition was the table read for the movie, so the entire cast was sitting around the table. And they had this, oh, you know what? I did the pilot before because it was the girl who played Ferris in the Little Darlings pilot and me, and we literally sat next to each other, and she would read one line as Dolores, and I would read the other, which is so fucking mean. That's crazy pressure. So yeah. that's how we did it. And then at the end, they took us um, th in the back to meet Maxwell Caulfield. So she went, and then I went, and we did this audition scene. And he said, why don't you let me walk you home? And I said, and and I said, I don't need, I don't need uh, you to walk me home. And he goes, Well, why don't you think of it as a date, okay? And I look him up and down. And I stared at his balls, and then I looked at his face, and I said, Why didn't you say so in the first place? And he was so handsome. He was like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And I got the part, I think, because I stared at his D. Smart. We have, we have to wrap up in 30 seconds. That's the greatest story I've ever heard. Yeah, that's just... exactly how I got hired here. <laughs> <laughs> Jim uh, just wrapped up sitting here. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Stared at his balls.